Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Beth. Welcome to my home in Orange County, California. I'm so excited to bring you inside. Come on in. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. Hi Homeworthy, I'm Beth Jones. I'm a fashion stylist and content creator. I've been doing this for 17 years and you are here in my home in Orange County, California. I have been living here in this home since my son was one years old, so about 10 years. And we were on the hunt for a home, which if you know the California real estate market at all, having a home that was more than three bedrooms in our price range was a big deal. And also one that was, you know, kind of my personal style. So I was on the hunt and found this four bedroom home in a great town called Tustin. And the biggest selling point for me was the fact that it was mid-century, but really it was the fireplace, which is a, uh, see-through fireplace between the dining room and the living room. It definitely needed a lot of work, but I saw all the potential in it. And so I instantly fell in love with it. I drove over here. I convinced my husband to come check it out. And I don't even know how, but we ended up getting this home. And honestly, I'm in love with it. And it's just been such a fun home to live in. And then we've been making it our own along the way, which I kind of love that. I'm such a, you know, kind of builder and creative. So I love that we've been going from the beginning stages to where we are now with it. I've taken this mid-century home and I love the bones of that, but I am a little quirkier than maybe the strict mid-century style. And so I turn this into what I like to call haute eclectic. I love something to be really eclectic, a mix of lots of different eras and times, as if I've traveled around the world and found everything. I haven't maybe traveled around the world, but I've traveled around thrift stores, flea markets, vintage stores everywhere I can find a gem, I bring it into this home. And then the haute part is a little bit elevated. I like it to feel a little glamorous. I don't want it to be too tchotchke or too uh, quirky totally. I want it to have that haute element to it. Welcome to the entry of my home. This is to me setting the tone for the rest of the house. I'm saying, hello, welcome. My house is gonna be full of collected treasures and I'm setting the tone right here with this entry space. I think the biggest thing is the backdrop, which is this gorgeous wallpaper that is from Anthropology. I loved the black and white with a touch of green in it. And you'll notice that I have a lot of black and white, green and oranges in my home. And so I feel like that was just instantly drew me in and I picked that here for the entry. And then really, like the rest of my home, it's such a collection of vintage and thrifted finds. I honestly just spend years finding all of this stuff. Some of the fun little things, I have this great basket down here, which I love was a gift from a friend and I ended up using it here in my home and I just like having that here at the entry. It's also a catch-all sometimes for shoes or if there's something laying around, I'm just gonna stick it in that basket. Back behind me is a bunch of posters, vintage art posters. I really love vintage art posters. I like that they often have the date on them. Something that makes me very excited is when I see a date. So this one is from 1977 in New York. And I just, I love to know the history of the art poster. And really it's a collection of a bunch of different types of art and very graphic, very bold. And I love just kind of setting the tone right there with that. These cute little swan ducks, whatever you want to call them, have been loved and broken by my sons a few times, but we keep bringing them back to life. And I love these. I found this at an antique store here in Tustin, which is the town that I'm from. And 
they will continue to probably be broken but brought back to life as much as I can and really just a few other little collected uh, vintage treasures I'm always looking for baskets and things that are unique in shape and can also be used to put you know more flowers or more um, accoutrements to the pieces but we're going to go from our entry into the living room we are now in my living room, which I feel like is the heartbeat of my home. And I think the big centerpiece for me is this gallery wall behind me. It's full of so many pieces of art that I honestly have been collecting for the last 20 years of my life. And as you can see, there's kind of a theme throughout all of them with the color palette. I often am looking for browns and creams and oranges. And so that's what connected all of these for me. And they really are from 20 plus years of collecting and they've come with me throughout each home that I've lived in. And so I feel like that's the first thing that always goes up in every home. Now we've been in this one for 10 years, but it has traveled with me and landed here. And so I always feel like that just sets the tone for me and I love it. And then really to me, what makes this room magical is the arrangement of the furniture. I have the couch, I've got two kind of conversation chairs as I like to call them and an accent chair. And I love to make it feel like let's all gather around and chat and drink coffee and watch a movie. And so for me, that was so, so important with the design here in the living room. And I would say this is probably my favorite room in the house. This has so many amazing collected treasures. I have books all over the table. And one special thing that people often am <laughs> people are often surprised by is that I actually make a yearly book of my family and they're all throughout the house. And so I have the last few years here on our table and often we have guests over and they find themselves looking at it and think, why have I not done that? And I just, I love doing it. It tells the story of each year of our life. And so that's always very important to have on our table. And then because I love fashion, I have a few fashion books with my Prada book. I have an amazing uh, book by a friend of mine called Big Thrift Energy, which is so incredible. This is by Virginia Chamley, and it's all about making your home special with thrifted treasures. So you know I love that. And then another really special piece is behind me. This is a Picasso print curtain that I found in an antique mall. And then I just love Picasso in general. And so I loved the idea of displaying it more as a mural. So we, you know, added a rod to it and then just put it here in our home. And this has been in our home, I think since the very beginning. So I loved all the colors throughout the graphic print of it. And something that I'm always trying to do with my home is the juxtaposition of very art driven pieces that feel graphic and punchy but then accented with something that feels maybe more romantic or more antique. So I'm always playing with that juxtaposition throughout my home. And you really can see that here with a lot of these pieces in the mix. We have these incredible candlesticks that have these gorgeous birds on them. And this always makes me think of Iris Atfell. Um, and that's just really fun to think of something special that she might have in her home, which she was a maximalist if there ever was one. And then again, I collect a bunch of art books and try to always pick books and use books that feel connected to who my family is. So I have an old fishing book, We Love to Fish. I have art books, Picasso. And really, again, just lots of treasures throughout. And I do think another theme that you'll see in my home a lot is uh, face-driven art. I love faces. I love to have forms and faces um, in a lot of my art. And I always want art that has been um, dated and signed by the artist. That is often what is the selling point for me, which you can see here, Lynn Carlson, 1989. This amazing floor lamp was found at one of my favorite thrift stores called Habitat for Humanity Restore. If you have one in your area, go to them because they have the best furniture. And I found this, which I think is more of the 1980s style. And I love the juxtaposition. Like I mentioned, I love that there is this very sculptural 1980s lamp. And then it's next to more of a, you know, kind of traditional black and white striped 
chair. So I like mixing it all together. And something else that you'll see here in my living room is that I have three rugs layered on top of themselves. I have a huge rug and then I have this more graphic print rug and then I have another um, antique rug on top of that. And really that is another theme that's throughout my whole house is the idea of layering. I'm often going to take a piece, put a book on top of it, and then put something else on top of that. So I love to layer with my outfits and I also love to layer with my home. And as I'm kind of glancing up here, this chandelier is I think one of the very first pieces that I found uh, before my husband and I moved into our home together and I found it at a garage sale. It was hanging in the garage and I thought I have to have this chandelier. It felt so romantic moving into my home with my husband and we actually used to have it in our bedroom and then when we moved into this house we brought it here in the center. So this feels very special to me. It feels very sentimental. It's a little bit falling apart, but I think I'll just keep it forever just because it feels like the first treasure that I found for our home and we've had it now for, you know, over 20 years. So I love that. I'm always looking to add more to my home. I found these amazing shelves at a thrift store as usual. And then what I like to do is go on a hunt and find all the little things to add to my spaces. So I went just with that in mind. I went hunting for treasures to add to this. I love it. It's such a mix of everything. I have a little vase and then I took candles and stuck them in there as if they were flowers or a plant. I love that they're all different shapes and colors. And then a really Really great vase. This is a drum which has even the um, musical notes sketched on that and it has a great bold color on the side with blue and red pops and I just thought it was so unique and cool and so I added that up there. I've got some more candlesticks and also just another great vase. So I'm always on the hunt for anything that feels unique as if it's lived a life already and then I bring it in and display it as if it's art. So this mirror is a little bit of a story because we, this is the second life mirror. I had a gorgeous gold mirror that was actually in our very first home. It's been with us forever and we had a little situation where we had two little basketball players deciding that this was their basketball court. They smashed into that mirror. It came down, shattered everywhere. No one was hurt except for the mirror and maybe my heart a little bit. But we went out and we found another one to replace it, which I love and I love that there's a story behind the fact that we lost our original mirror, but I love to have a great mirror. I think it helps to open up the room, it reflects, and it can also be a fun little selfie mirror. I take selfies here sometimes and even with my family every now and then. So I love to have that as just an accent here in the hall and open up the space more. And something else that I didn't mention is that all throughout the whole center of our home, is black and white walls. I have white on top and black on the bottom. And we did that from the day we moved in. And to me, it just set the tone. It was like, this is the black and white palette. And then let's add all the crazy fun eclecticness on top. The very first thing that drew me to this home was this amazing fireplace. It was a see-through fireplace that connected the dining room and the living room, which there used to be some more walls involved, which we removed. And this also used to be a white fireplace. Um, and then we ended up painting it all black. And I just love that accent right here in the home. And for me, something I talk about with my home is that I want it to be something that's warm and cozy. And the fact that we have a, a central fireplace casting that warm glow and that warm feel all throughout my house was absolutely the biggest selling point for me. And I just love it. it to me, it's romantic and it's cozy and I love it. And then again, more faces and more figures are gonna be throughout my whole house. I love this piece of art. I got this at an antique store here in Orange, which is a great place for finding amazing home treasures. It's a whole area called Old Town Orange and they have a huge um, streets and rows of antique stores. And I found this beautiful piece with this girl holding a bird and I absolutely love it. I feel like there's a whole story happening there in her face. Um, and then again, just more sculptural pieces. I like to just look for anything that feels dramatic, 
This could have been, been an outdoor piece at one point, but I liked uh, putting it on top of a table and then I'm always layering. So another little sculptural piece is underneath that table. And then this here is probably one of my favorite pieces of art. This I also got at an antique store in orange. And if you've ever seen the movie with Drew Barrymore of Ever After, this reminded me so much of the painting in that movie, which I think it's supposed to be Cinderella in the painting. And um, I immediately thought of that movie when I saw this painting and I've had it, I think for 10 years, at least as long as I've lived in this house. And again, it just feels so romantic. It feels nostalgic for me since I love that movie. And I just, I love the colors of it and that it's kind of abstract. You don't totally see every detail. And I, I like to add just like ropes and cords all over uh, different pieces of art. So I just added this little kind of tassel cord on top. So my professional journey is uh, full of twists and turns. I started a fashion blog back in 2007, which the word blog was like a foreign language. Nobody knew what that was at the time. And I actually started it with the idea of eventually maybe opening a vintage store. And so I wanted a website about what that vintage store was gonna be about. And I found these things called blogs, which were to me a free website basically. And I started to just document how I love to wear vintage clothing. And then little did I know that this would turn into a full blown career, that people would be reading my blog from all around the world. And really all the twists and turns started to happen. I have done so many different things over the last 17 years. I worked with uh, the surf brand company Quicksilver. They launched a women's line and I became an ambassador for them and really when I did that that introduced me to the whole extra layer of the fashion world because I was in New York I was in Europe I was meeting with designers magazines and really kind of exposing myself to the whole world of fashion and then from there I basically started doing styling editorial styling I worked as an online fashion editor for a long time and then really it turned into B. Jones style, which is what it is now. And I think it's what I would call a creative hub. There's a YouTube channel, Instagram, TikTok, my website, bjonesstyle.com. And it really, I say the heartbeat is always play dress up. Everything that I create comes from this place of playing dress up. So I'm always creating videos and content that's about playing dress up and I like to do that with vintage clothing and I get to bring viewers into my world which is about going into a thrift store or a flea market or a vintage shop and finding a treasure but then being inspired by what's happening on the runways in New York and Milan and Paris and really just playing as if I'm a five-year-old with a dress-up closet and recreating what I've seen on the runways with my you know thrifted treasures uh, from all the different places that I go to. The living room is such a central part to our home and what I love about it is it also features our atrium which is a indoor outdoor space that we spend a lot of life in, we eat meals in. So I'm going to take you over to our atrium. Welcome to our atrium. This is one of the biggest things about my home that I fell in love with when I first saw it. I loved the idea of having an indoor outdoor space that our whole home is centered around. We've used this as, you know, a hangout space with chairs and couches, but we turned it more into a dining space, which I really love. We live in California. We have beautiful weather and so I love the idea that we can come on here and have a family meal. This is my favorite place to entertain. I like to think of a whole new story. I recreate the table. I go out to the thrift stores. I love to find even new plates and glasses and do different tablecloths. So I love to help it feel like we're escaping into a European vacation whenever we have a dinner party here and under the twinkle lights and cheersing with all of our friends and our family. So to me this is such a great place for a party and for having friends and turning on the music and just having a great time. But then, you know, on the day to day, we really do spend family dinners around this table. And now that spring is here and the weather's nice, you know, we're often out here having dinner. And then even on our uh, twinkle lights, I've added these strands of beads and um, really just anything that drapes to me is adding a little bit of romance 
to a space and I actually did this over the holidays and then I thought this is really magical I think I'm gonna keep this idea going so I've just added more beads to it and I think it's fun I can change it out and put other um, drapery out here as well but for now this is what I'm sticking with and then just some fresh flowers and plants always with the candles setting uh, you know just more of that ambiance for uh, guests and then we've had a lot of fun adding some beautiful plants and this gorgeous tree here in the atrium and actually it's funny we have all these amazing vines growing throughout the atrium which we did a renovation and they had to tear all of them down which broke my heart because i love uh, the vines and how amazing it feels in this space but thankfully they all came back to life and started growing again and they're kind of falling and wispy and it feels very whimsical and uh, playful out here and yeah this is one of my favorite places in our whole home this is a place that we love to eat and have dinner parties, but I also love to entertain and gather around our dining room table. So let's head in there. And while we're heading into the dining room, I did want to point out this amazing trim that goes around our door frame that goes down to our bedrooms in our home. I love this because I had a friend over, we were having dinner, she's an amazing artist, and I was telling her that I wanted to create this unique frame around the door, and she was like, I can do that right now, let's do it, and I thought, okay. So she freehanded and then just sketched out with pencil and then went in and painted the whole frame as we were having dinner here in my home, and I love that because it's just this personalization that happened spontaneously from this amazing artist and friend of mine, and I feel like I have a little piece of her right here in our home framing the rest of our home. So then here in our dining room, I think the first thing that I'll mention is just this beautiful marble table. This is a story in itself. Usually pieces in my home have some kind of treasure hunt to them. And I found this on Facebook Marketplace. It was, I think, $15. And honestly, I think just someone wanted it moved for them because it was so heavy. And I was dressed up in some fabulous outfit. I think I even had platform shoes on. And my husband and I went and tackled this thing and dragged it out. I don't even know how it ended up in our car or ended up here, but we got it here. And I love it. I love that it's kind of got this green and this really unique abstract uh, almost painterly element to it it's absolutely beautiful and really then it's we surrounded it with um, some amazing uh, fabric chairs that I picked up at the Long Beach Antique Market. And then we have this amazing chandelier. This is from West Elm. I worked with Victoria Smith, which is a home interior designer to help us renovate this whole space. And she helped pick out that design for me. And then up here on the fireplace is this beautiful piece of art that is again lots of black and white in my home and so these two kind of mirrored images of flowers and this is also a fun treasure that i found i go on a yearly uh, thrift road trip with a friend of mine and we went to tucson arizona and i found this at one of the antique stores that we went to in tucson and so i also love that i found it on a road trip with her so that hangs here on my fireplace and then this rug is from the Long Beach Antique Market. I, I love to go to the flea markets and find my rugs. And I think if I had to say there's one thing that's the most important to me in a room, it's a rug. You get the rug and then you can kind of build everything around that. And I also believe in kind of those vintage antique rugs. They really hold up over time and they feel timeless and trendless. So here in our dining room, I have this walkthrough space that I wanted to create a whole vignette, but it also needed to be functional at the same time. The very first thing I put up was this incredible piece of art. I love it. It's been signed by the artist in 1953. And again, I found this at a thrift store. It was actually tucked behind a couch, lots of clutter on top of it, but I saw just the peak of it and thought, what is that? I have to have it. And once I you know, pulled it out and saw it, I fell in love with it. It's another piece that's really traveled with me through lots of our homes. And I love the color palette of it. I love that it's dried flowers and flecks of gold. And it really is absolutely beautiful and such a central piece to me here in the home. And then 
I have this bench here, which is great. I think it's beautiful, but it also is very practical and functional because I do have two boys and they like to throw things, you know, off to the side when they come in the house. So this is kind of nice. This is where backpacks and things like that go or sports equipment even um, end up. And then this little vignette to me is really special. I love it. It's a great place to sit and have coffee. Or if there are people over here, it's another little kind of hangout space. And I don't know why, but this fish vase is one of my favorite pieces. Another theme in my home is fish. My boys love to fish and I think that just draws me to fish. So I'm always looking for little fish pieces everywhere I go and I love this quirky vase and adding these um, feathers in there. And then really these are just a bunch of collected items. I found this in an antique mall in orange and I just love that it's like this very sculptural piece there to kind of set the stage and kind of frame out this whole space. Just on the styling note, I love to layer things up and so I'm always looking for extra pieces to add. So something a little more unexpected is I love this little tassel that I found at a thrift store and I just added it here on the lamp. So I think just looking for those pieces and dressing up the items in your home can be really fun. So my approach to fashion and my approach to my interior design style I think is very similar. It really is about, I think, the treasure hunt and bringing that to life. Now, it could be through what I wear or in my home, it's about where it all ends up and how I kind of create the final product, which actually in my home I feel like is never ending. I'm always building and always creating and always adding more. I would definitely say I'm a maximalist when it comes to my personal style and I would say that's very much reflected in my home. There's lots of lots of lots of things. I am not the person that is take one thing off or take one thing away. I'm if anything put more things. How can I stack? How can I layer? And that's so much about how I get dressed every morning as well. And as you can see, our dining room is really open and flows right into the kitchen. So let's go ahead and head in to our kitchen, which I feel like is just really fun. I wanted everything to feel really open. I wanted it to feel like a place that people can gather. And so it was really important to me when we renovated it to do this um, whole central island here so that we can have people sitting here if I'm also cooking or if my kids are here They can be there eating and then I can kind of be doing my thing So I love having this central space here in the kitchen and then really it's a lot of black and white I went with kind of a black bottom and then white top because I always feel like that's a great Kind of starting place for all of the extra things that I like to add. I don't like to be locked into one um, you know, one story. So I like to be able to add lots to it. And I always feel like black and white is just a great neutral. And then really it's a functional space, but then I'm going to have a lot of the pieces of art that I love with this guitar player on it. Again, hand painted. I'm always looking for those unique uh, pieces of art whenever I'm at the flea markets. And then I've got everything ready for cooking. I really do love to cook, especially Southern food. If I can, not all the time because there's a lot of butter and cream that I can't always have in the Southern dishes, but I do love to entertain and have people over and cook some of my Southern dishes whenever I can. And then, you know, I love to have a good morning with coffee. I've got a collection of some of my favorite cookbooks here. And then up here, when we designed the space, we added this big pantry with our fridge. And I definitely needed something large to go on top. I wanted there to be something up there. And I found this amazing set of four baskets. And I loved that they were from big to small. And I just, I found them at a thrift store and thought they were the perfect element to add on top of our pantry. And then something just a little bit personalized and fun here in our kitchen is that we've started a collection of magnets from different places that we've traveled with our kids. And so they get very excited every place that we go to find the newest magnet. So we are continuing this tradition for every time we go traveling, but it's kind of fun. And there's a story, you know, from each place place and a wedding in Wisconsin in the fall and back in Hilton Head, South Carolina, where I'm from. And it's a shark because my husband caught a shark. So there's lots of little stories in those magnets, which I think is really fun. 
And then here on the countertop, I always love to have a big pot to kind of accent either amazing branches or flowers, whatever I'm in the mood for at the moment. This was a thrift store find as well. I do have a theme of colors that run throughout my home. So like a rusty red or a rusty orange is always going to appeal to me. And then I love to just add fresh flowers, fresh branches, whatever I've found along the way. I do like to go forage every now and then and clip things down and add them to my vases here on the counter. And then of course, just adding fruit for whenever my sons come home from school and then they're about to head off to baseball practice, they, they can grab a snack really easily. And I don't have to necessarily grab it for them. And then back here is just another collection of great art that I've found in actually a lot of different places. Some of the times where I've traveled with my husband, I usually try to find a piece of art from wherever we are. And so, you know, even as simple as a road trip to Santa Barbara, uh, some pieces in, from Palm Springs. So I always try to find at least one piece of art wherever we go. And I like to just hang them all throughout. And you can even see over here, um, connected to the fireplace, which there used to be a wall right here, but we opened this up. So I loved that I could put even more art going all the way down. And this is another piece from my trip in Tucson. And again, it has 1976, the artist signed it. So I always love to see when the artist did it. So I get a question a lot about how do I have the home I have and then have two very active boys. I have an 11 year old and an eight year old. And I think one thing is that I just raised them in this. They have from day one been in a home that wasn't necessarily covered in kid stuff, though their stuff was everywhere, you know, when they were playing with it. But they've lived in this house with lots of collector's items and things, and they've kind of just navigated around it. I do believe that like I mentioned before, nothing has to be perfect. So there's definitely been broken pieces. And in particular, there's a mirror leaning on a wall, which is our second mirror because they were playing basketball here in my house and knocked it over and it shattered everywhere. But I just feel like you can't take anything with you. Who cares? It's fine. We'll all survive if something gets ruined. And really everything is mostly found in my home. So I feel like I can always find something, you know, again. And they have a yard to play in and they have a park to play in as well. Definitely their rooms are theirs and they can kind of get creative and crazy in there. But I just feel like raising them in the home that you wanna live in helps them to kind of adapt to the surroundings. From here, you can follow me into our music room, which is in the back of our house. Here in our music room, which we were really lucky to get a fourth room uh, in California. And so we turned this into my husband's and son's music room. He loves to play the electric guitar. He also was in a band in his youth uh, playing the drums. So we have a drum set and we have all his guitars in here. And it's been really fun. Ever since his 40th birthday, he uh, formed a band that's a 90s covers band. And so there's some pieces around here that are just uh, from some of their shows and things like that. I really wanted to make this space feel like a music studio. So I started off with this incredible rug that I found at the Long Beach Antique Market and then really built around that. Even just pieces that I added here on the shelves. Some of them are just random little tchotchkes that I found along the way. And then we have a Coldplay record with the lyrics of Yellow on there, which that song is significant for my husband and I. Um, and then, you know, some fun little family photos scattered throughout, but then Something really special was this beautiful um, photograph that was taken in 1970 of The Who in concert. I love that it's an incredible band, but also this was taken at Angel Stadium, which my husband is a huge Angels fan, so I loved it. It was the coming together of music and sports, which is something that he loves. And then this piece of art here reminded me of a gold record that somebody might have in their studio, which I found this in an antique store as well. And I just loved that it felt music related somehow without being literal music. And then there are some photos and posters from some of my husband's shows that he's done. And then we just added some layers of cozy in here with a really great uh, couch that I even chose the color to reflect 
often the color of guitars. And then we have a set of drums. And these are uh, my boys, Santa actually gave them the drums. So it was fun to have them starting to play over the holiday season. And my husband is often in here just jamming and having a good time, but it's also a great kind of hang space. Whenever we have friends over, we'll all come back here and hang out. And if there's somebody uh, who plays music, they'll start playing as well. So it's, it's really fun. It's, it's just a nice place for a jam sesh. So something a little bit funky about our house is that we are in a mid-century home and so the whole home is flat roof. And so some of the ceilings are a little bit lower. I thought it would be unique and fun to add an accent color to the top of the ceiling. It is low, but I felt like it almost embraced the fact that it's low and it just adds this great green pop that gives a little bit of life and I just like framing things out like my hallway and then here on the ceiling I just think that's a fun little addition to the home. One thing I love most about my home is that it really is a story everywhere you look. I think of fashion in that way. I want my outfit to feel like a story, a character, and my home is also a reflection of that. I love that I can look at a piece of art and I can tell you a whole story of where I found it, the man that I met that gave me a great deal on the rug, the chandelier that was in a garage sale uh, before I even got married that I brought into our first home. Uh, I just think it's fun to feel like there's stories all throughout my home and then it just tells one big overall story and will continue to tell that story. I'd love to go show you my favorite space, which is the primary bedroom and bathroom and closet. So let's go. We are here in the primary bedroom, which also functions as my workspace. And we recently renovated this space to add a closet and a better primary bathroom. But what I loved about it is that it really opened up our room to create, which I like to call it a pied a terre. It feels like my private little space where I can work and live and play. And so, First of all, this space right here is where I work. I work in fashion and so I wanted to surround myself with lots of inspiration. I had my um, contractor build these custom shelves so that I could put all of my uh, fashion books on display and just keep myself surrounded by inspiration. So some of my favorites are first of all the Vivian Westwood catwalk collection that has all of her runway shows in it. I have some really special ones that are harder to find like an old Chloe 70 book that has just so much inspiration of her personal style. And then I'm a huge Carrie Bradshaw fan. So I have a few of the Sex and the City books here. I have some more unique ones like the All American um, ads from the 90s I love to use as references and just even for inspiration for the work that I do, um, Grey Garden. So there's just tons of inspiration on these shelves. And then I've added just fun little collections of things that I found along the way at thrift stores just to keep it interesting and fun. And then even just here at the basket um, below are some of my go-to bags that I'm just grabbing on a daily ba basis. So I love to have those right there for me. So this love seat, I wanted to create a space where I could work, but also that would be comfortable and cozy. And this gorgeous uh, love seat was actually found on Facebook Marketplace during the California hurricane. I don't know if anyone knew about it, but it happened last year, which was a huge shock. And I even messaged the lady and said, do you mind if my husband comes to grab the uh, love seat from you? And he braved the weather and went and got it for me. And it's absolutely perfect. I love it. It's so cozy. I love all the little um, the little pink flowers throughout it and then it just gives this great space to work from here with this little table and I have some amazing art behind me and then I even love to have some inspiration just constantly on display that I can change out with this uh, pin board that I use as a mood board so I'm always changing this depending on the season or what's going on just to kind of get me my brain buzzing and get me excited and that just sits right here and you know what it also makes a great place for a Zoom call because every now and then we still have Zoom calls and meetings and I love to have something interesting behind me while I'm on a Zoom call. Throughout our home, we have black and white on all the walls. In here, I wanted to do a little bit of a different color palette, but keep that theme of the half white 
and then half whatever I went with. And I went with this more brown color just to change it up and give a little bit of a different accent color for the bedroom. And I really, I like that because it feels like a great neutral that I could build on. I love to layer and I love to layer rugs. And so first I added just a simple jute rug to fill the entire space to add some warmth. But then I have this gorgeous, amazing rug that I picked up at the another one from the Long Beach Antique Market. I loved this peachy pink tone and somehow that ended up very spontaneously in the rest of this bedroom. I didn't necessarily plan that out. I think I often start with a rug and then I build on top of that, which moving into the bedroom space, I absolutely love. This is Piglet in Bed is the bedding and I fell in love with it. I love the stripes. I loved that it was kind of going along with the color palette that I have here in the room. And then I wanted to create an amazing space here behind the bed and I envisioned some kind of mural or some kind of fabric. I went out with that in mind and ended up in an antique mall and found this gorgeous piece. It was already um, ready to go to be hung on the wall and I think it's actually upholstery that someone quilted together. It happened to actually have the colors that I was looking for. I loved the added some blues in here. And again, it feels like whoever made this already had a whole story going on and I really loved it. It was spontaneously the perfect accent for uh, right behind the bed. And then I'm always on the hunt for gorgeous pieces to add to the side of the bed. And I found this at the Habitat for Humanity Restore as well. I loved this amazing globe light that was already built into the shelf and it has like this aged brass feel to it. And then I just add, you know, added books and things that I love, magazines that I'm gonna grab while I'm laying here in, in bed. And then this is actually really unique and different. I loved it. It was a framed bingo game that someone had framed. They played their first bingo in 1993. And I just thought this was the cutest thing. I wonder if some couple played bingo and they fell in love over bingo. I don't know, but I thought that was so fun. And so that's a cute, quirky little piece of art there on my wall. And here on the dresser in my room is one of my favorite pieces of art, which is this amazing face print, which I've mentioned faces travel throughout my whole home. And I found this with a friend. We were both at the antique uh, or we were both at the flea market and I fell in love with it. I bought it. I brought it home. And then some another friend was visiting and they thought, Beth, that looks just like you. And then I looked at it and realized it really does look like someone maybe did an ab abstract painting of my face, which is just kind of a fun, happy little coincidence. But I love that piece of art. And that's just kind of central for me here on this dresser. And then just a bunch of collection of, you know, different pieces that I found at thrift stores, old pottery, always adding plants wherever I can. When it comes to personal style, I would definitely say finding that for yourself starts with inspiration. I believe that we should just be soaking up inspiration all the time. I love to look at movies. I love to look at style icons. If it's a character in a movie or if it's someone that's living and breathing now or from the days gone by, I love to think of um, characters in books and really look at the fashion books, look at the archives. I think soaking up inspiration is such a great place to start and not that you take and replicate any of that, but maybe you find the thread throughout. What is the thing that joins all the inspirations that you're loving together? If it's chic and um, simple, or if it's modern and classic, or if it's eclectic and crazy, I think finding kind of the thread that weaves it all together is where you can kind of start and then notice the patterns of what you love. And once you kind of have that inspiration, then going out and shopping and finding the things that kind of reflect what you're inspired by. And then really, I believe that you shouldn't let maybe where you live and how you live dictate what you wear. I think you should just be able to wear whatever you want. If you wanna be comfortable and go to the baseball game, then be comfortable. If you wanna be fabulous and go to the baseball game, be fabulous. So I really think you can just kind of interpret your style however you want and take that into the day and not necessarily feel like, oh, well, I have nowhere to go in this. I just think you should have fun and play no matter what. 
we're gonna move from the primary bedroom to the bathroom. And this is where all the pampering and the playing goes. So come on. So we are now in the primary bathroom, which I just had the best time designing. We recently just renovated this space. And as you can see, there is a lot of print and texture throughout this whole bathroom. Starting off with this amazing terrazzo print tile. I loved all the colors of the terrazzo. And to me, I know that this might be shocking, but this is a neutral for me that I can play off of. And I really loved that. And the next thing that I chose for this space was this gorgeous wallpaper. This is um, from West Elm as well. And this is a ginkgo plant printed all over. I love, again, the black and white but with more of a graphic print. I feel like I'm surrounded by inspiration. I'm ready to get dressed. I'm ready to pamper. I'm ready to play right here in my bathroom. And then in terms of the bathroom and the sink, I think the very first thing that I fell in love with was this amazing leaf uh, sconce light. That was such a central part for me when designing this space. And I always have a lot of gold and brass throughout my home as well. So those are, you know, a lot of the accent pieces in the bathroom are gold and brass. This is our toilet area, which I believe can be just as creative as the rest of your home. And I had so much fun designing this. I did a green accent wall inside of this little closet space and then filled it with art, lots of faces. So you're maybe not fully private when you're in there because there's a lot of faces looking, <laughs> looking at you, but I love it. And then um, really they're all from years of collecting. I went on the hunt looking for faces and thought it would be fun to add those right there to the little toilet closet. So it's a fun space to escape in and get maybe a little privacy. And then the bathroom extends here with this amazing shower, which I love. It feels so open. We have a lot of light coming in with windows and a door. And I just love that. I can watch the sun set. I can watch the sun rise while I'm taking a shower. But of course we need a little privacy. And so I found these amazing curtains which were already done had come from an uh, vintage, you know, a vintage uh, market. And I absolutely loved them. Again, it felt like they seamlessly connected to the terrazzo print on the floor tile and they have a nice heaviness to them. And honestly, these are my favorite curtains in our entire house. I love it. I added a little accent uh, stool right there to throw our towels on. And then just continuing the tile with some of the green uh, accenting with the white. And now we're gonna move into my favorite place, which is my closet. So come on in. And I like to call this the dress up closet, not just the closet, it's the dress up closet. This is where you come and you play and you dress up and you become a new character every single day. And I had so much fun designing this space. And if you look at it, you might see that it does resemble Carrie Bradshaw's closet. It's that long style. It's got all of the fun all around me and it's where I play every day. So when you first enter, I have this whole wall of shoes which aren't necessarily filled with designer shoes or anything. They're all just fun, great pairs of shoes. Some of my absolute favorites are a pair of 90s, what I like to call Dalmatian print Mary Janes, and they're so much fun. They're a little fur, and they add a little pop of personality to any and every outfit. And then I really have organized this space with what I like to call versatility. I like to have lots of options for layering. So if you notice, there's actually not a lot of dresses in here because I do a lot of styling with all the other pieces. So I have a ton of blazers and jackets. And then this is what I call the party section. It's all of the pieces that feel like a party. I mean, how much does this say I want to have a good time and play? So this whole section right here is just party pieces, which is central in my closet. As you can see, I like to have a good time. And then I have, you know, all of my pants down here, tops, skirts, and accessories, loads and loads of accessories. I believe in adding all the fun, like cherries on top to the outfit. I have a million belts 
And you'll even notice up high, I have a lot of hats. I love to wear hats. I often feel like an outfit's not complete if I don't have a hat on. And then, you know, all the bags kind of surround me here on the top. And we have been in the winter season, so you never know when you need a fur boa, is what I believe. <laughs> um, and then even here on my party rack, I have like what I call the party shoes all the shoes that feel extra fun. So I think having that central here in the closet just keeps me excited about getting dressed. It's not the classic pieces, it's the fun pieces. And then I like to just display some of my favorite pieces that are in my closet that feel like works of art and just, um, they just keep me inspired when I'm getting dressed. So I do have a lot of clothes and I do like to keep things organized and I am often hunting and finding more. So I do go by the rule if i bring things in then i need to send some things off i don't always follow that rule but i do really try to i like to clean my closet out on a regular basis so if it's every other month i might do a good little scan take things out that i don't feel like i'm wearing as much anymore or if i bring a bag in i'm going to take some pieces out or i'm going to lend them to people or send them off to new homes which i really love to do um, here and there i like to do a little closet sale where I can send my treasures off to other closets for someone else to play in. An important piece for me with this closet was to find a beautiful chandelier. And this is actually from another vintage uh, lover who is a dealer at a space in Old Town Orange. She has an amazing vintage collection, but she also has this amazing chandelier. And so I asked if I could purchase it from her and bring it into my dress up closet. So from her dress up closet to mine, and it feels like the little central glow, it just adds a little bit of magic every time I'm getting dressed. I think what gives a home a soul is the life that is lived in it. And I want my home to be a collection of beauty, but I also want it to be a place where people feel so cozy and warm the minute they walk in. And I have set up my home to feel that way. I want them to sit here in my living room with everything's kind of in a circle. So I want conversation to happen there. Nothing is perfect in my home. And I actually really love that because to me, that's where life is lived. It shouldn't be perfect. Life's not perfect. And so I love that it feels like, yes, there's lots of art and lots of fun things to look at. But if you knock something over and break it, it's okay. Cause it was probably $5 at the thrift store. So I just like there to be stories everywhere, it to feel warm and cozy and it to feel like a place of joy and celebration everywhere you look. I think home means joy and warmth and love and safety. I think it's coming together with all the things that bring you joy, that you feel safe, that you feel warm, you feel known, you can relax, you can celebrate, you can dance. And to me, that is where home is. And you can really make that happen anywhere. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content, shopping guides, and so much more.